for those awesome testimonies let's lift our voices and our hands to heaven and give the glory to god this morning give thanks and give praise to his name appreciate him from the depth of your heart these are the doings of god and they are marvelous in our eyes we cannot take them for granted let us offer gratitude let us offer gratitude unto god from the depth of our hearts father we thank you we give you the praise we give you the glory we give you the honor and all the adoration you are worthy of praise you are worthy of glory you are worthy of honor you are worthy of adoration we thank you father we thank you father we thank you father give him the glory also for the answers he has given to every one of our prayers appreciate him for answering our prayers this morning father we thank you for the answer to our prayers and now begin to ask him to speak to you today lord i'm here to hear directly from you speak to me today by your word all the people gathered early in the morning for to hear him lord i've come to hear from you today speak to me by your word in the name of jesus christ father thank you our father we give you the praise and glory this morning thank you for the testimonies that we have heard these are your doings and they are marvelous in our eyes and we give you all the praise thank you also for the answers to all of our prayers we give you all the glory this morning we are before your word asking that you will speak to us this morning let your word transform each one of us we give you praise for it lord in jesus precious name we have prayed amen. somebody believes say loud amen. amen give jesus a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence it is my year of breaking limits our line of exhortation we began looking at yesterday for this week is serving God is every believer's covenant responsibility. Serving God is every believer's covenant responsibility. We came to recognize that when it comes to our stewardship, a servant of God does not necessarily have to be a man or woman with a title. In fact, we said that whether it's old, young, male, female with or without a title anyone that is serving god and the interest of his kingdom is classified as a servant of god that means that it's a matter of function not a matter of title and we began to recognize from scriptures yesterday looking at specific examples of this reality but let's begin this morning by realizing that you don't have to be a prophet to be, I mean, to serve God. You don't have to be a prophet to serve God. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 28, the Bible says there that in the multitude of the people is the king's honor. He said, but in the want of the people is the destruction of the prince. In the multitude of the people is the king's honor. But in the want of the people is the destruction of the prince. In other words, the honor of the king is the gathering of the multitudes. Therefore, anyone that is a part of gathering the multitudes is honoring the king. And for us, our king is our God. Therefore, everyone that is a part of engaging in seeing the multitudes gathered is honoring God regardless of his title and regardless of his status. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30, the Bible makes us to understand this. He said, he that honors me, I will honor. So, if you are part of honoring him, you are entitled to his honor. No matter whether you are, whether you are male, female, old, young, educated uneducated it does not matter you look at the testimony that we heard this morning of that sister was left alone with two children in secondary school not knowing how to make ends meet but then she decided to focus on jesus as she began to engage focusing on jesus he decorated her life she said i was in a rented apartment i was in debt everything looked upside down but here i am now i am able to pay my children's school fees for a year they are in secondary school they pay per term but here she says, I'm able to pay it for the entire year. And not only that, I'm in a rented apartment. I'm able to buy land and build my own house. A supernatural turnaround just by serving God. 
So we see clearly from scriptures that it's not about a person's title or a person's calling. It's about the function of commitment to the you know, assignment of serving God's agenda. We see an example in scriptures and we're looking at an example of Job. Job can be described as a renowned business leader. And we see it from scriptures that he was described as an accredited servant of God. In Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, we have the description of the greatness of Job. There was a man in the land of Oz. His name was Job. The man was perfect. He was upright. One that feared God. He eschewed evil. He said, and there were born to him seven sons and three daughters. And his substance was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses. A very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all men that were in the east. This was the description of the greatness of this man called Job. But what was the pathway for that greatness? In verse 8 and verse 9, we see the Bible telling us there that God began to testify of Job. He said, And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? That's God's testimony of the man. That is God saying to Satan, Have you seen, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the face of the earth. A businessman, but separated from everyone else. He said, a perfect man, an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the face of the earth. So our stewardship is not dependent on our title. Our stewardship is not dependent on our position. Our stewardship is not dependent on our gender. Have you considered my servant Job? He said there is none like him on the earth. His stewardship had distinguished him. And as a result of that, you discover the greatness that resulted. If you look at what the scripture said there in this verse 8, you discover that all God was describing was his service. So the service there, his stewardship was the key to the greatness. God was not impressed by the greatness. God was the one behind the greatness. He said, now this man is serving me. And as a result of that, look at what I have made of him. So we must understand that when it comes to stewardship, looking at the example of Job, we find a man that was a renowned you know, business leader, but ended up accredited by God as a servant of God. And that's why it's important for us to continue to examine ourselves and begin to wonder, what is it that God's testimony will be concerning you, concerning me? What will God say? Will he say, just my son? No. You see, God does not only want sons, he wants seven sons. Individuals that are engaging with his purpose upon the earth. In the book of Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 and verse 18, the Bible makes us to understand there, he said, and they shall be mine, said the Lord, in that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. He said, and then you will return and descend between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. There's always going to be a difference between those who are serving and those who are not serving. That's why it's important for us to understand the necessity of positioning ourselves in our kingdom engagement because it is the key to our distinction. It's important to note, therefore, that you are not wasting your time serving the Lord. You are investing into your destiny. You are not wasting your time serving the Lord. You are investing into your destiny. In the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 all the way to verse 9, the Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. He said, He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. He said, let us therefore not be weary in well-doing. Don't start and stop. He said, for in due season you sh- we will reap if we faint not. So God is making it very clear that our consistency, our continuity in our engagement in kingdom stewardship is the key. We must understand that as we are engaging, we are investing. When a man is planting a seed into the ground, when the seed enters the ground, he cannot see anything. But he has put something inside. And it is a matter of time. That which was invested will surely come forth. It's important to note that every moment of engagement is a moment of investment. 
when you kneel to pray engaging in kingdom advancement prayer you are investing when you go after the lost you are investing when you follow up after your converts you are investing and the bible says don't be weary in well-doing because in due season you will reap it if you faint not it's vital for us to understand therefore that every engagement is spiritual investment and whatever is invested spiritually will be practically harvested it's very important for us to understand that in the book of exodus chapter 23 verse 25 and 26 it says there thou shalt serve the lord your god and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee he said that there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land the number of thy days i will fulfill you discover where did it start thou shalt serve and the rest is god's response thou shalt serve and he shall bless he will take he will not permit anyone to cast their young he will not permit them to be barren the number of their days he will fulfill every one of them is god's response to one thing you do one thing and he does all things in response to our engagement so our engagement in stewardship is not wasting of time it is investment into destiny in john chapter 12 and verse 26 the bible says to us there he said if a man serve me let him follow me he says and where i am take note of that where i am there also shall my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor where i am if he's serving me is entitled to come to where i am my own honor becomes his honor my decoration becomes his decoration my glory begins to reflect upon his life where i am there also shall my servant be this is very important for us to understand so the honor of god is reserved for the seven son those who are engaged in serving god are the ones who are permitted to be honored by god in john chapter 5 and verse 44 we conclude with this it says to us there he said yeah they which seek honor one from another he said and seek not the honor that cometh from god only there is one that comes from only god no one can give it except him and it only answers to stewardship may each one of us receive grace to position ourselves for this kind of honor by reason of our engagement in the name of jesus christ amen. somebody believe it say louder amen will you rise your feet with me this morning lift your hand lift your voice lord i receive grace i receive grace to engage consistently in stewardship so as not to miss my own reward i receive that grace this morning 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 thank you father for it and blessed be your name in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Give Jesus a big hand as we receive our thanks.